In this podcast, we're only going to cover one sample exercise, and that's going to be sample exercise 13.10. As we learned previously, colligative properties, which mean of the collection, depend solely on the number of particles that are dissolved, not the identity. And so if you have an electrolytic solution, it will have greater numbers of particles that go into solution, as shown over here on the left-hand side, of sodium and chloride ions that split up on a two-for-one basis. One mole of salt gives you two moles total of ions. On the right-hand side, this picture is showing a molecular substance. One mole of dry sugar yields one mole of wet sugar. So one of the previous problems we had talked about, non-volatile, non-electrolytic solute. And that's because you can't have things evaporating away that will complicate our calculations. And also, we have a slightly more complex calculation to do if they're an electrolyte. Now what's an electrolyte? An electrolyte is a substance like salt that's going to split up in water and be able to conduct electricity. So a one molar solution of sodium chloride will have <clears throat> twice as many particles as a one molar solution of a uh, molecular substance, in this case methanol. Now it may not show twice the change in the freezing point and we're going to talk about how you can calculate that. One mole of salt in water actually on paper you would think it gives two moles of ions, but there apparently some kind of other forces that cause it to have less than two times the number of moles of salt. In fact, it has the ability to have a reassociation of the particles coming back together. So when you look at this chart here, essentially what we're saying, let's look at salt as an example here. Salt's value for this thing we call the Van Toff factor is two. For me, that means one sodium and one chloride appear when you put it into a salt solution. In reality, the value is just a little bit less than two depending upon the concentration. Notice that the weaker the concentration, the greater the Van Hoft factor. The stronger the concentration, the more likely that the sodiums and chlorides could bump back into each other and therefore have a slightly less effect on the colligative properties. But for our purposes, let's just pretend that it makes two particles of ions for every one mole of salt that dissolves. So essentially, to do these types of problems, you use exactly the same freezing point depression and boiling point elevation equations. You just multiply them by the Van Hoff factor. Now some of you might have happy memories of our ice cream lab from last year. We did the same sort of calculations. We used rock salt and we used the freezing point depression equation, but we had to times it by two because one mole of salt gives us two moles of ions. Colligative properties only dependent upon the number of particles in solution, not necessarily the identity. So if you were asked a question that said, compare various substances and predict them in order of their expected freezing point, first of all, they have to have the same solvent. Well, it says aqueous solution, so they're all being dissolved in water. If I was to break this down just at a quick glance, calcium chloride, sodium chloride, they're definitely ionic. And hydrogen chloride is kind of borderline, but it will dissociate readily in 100% into ions in water. Acetic acid, CH3COOH, though, is a weak acid, and only 1% of it will dissociate or split up. And finally, C12H22O11, that's a sugar. It's a molecular substance. So, if you look at the chart that's in green, you can notice that they've taken each molal concentration, for example, calcium chloride, has a 0.05 molal concentration in calcium, but twice as much molal concentration in chloride, because the formula is CaCl2. For me, that Van Hoft factor would have been 3. So if you add 0.05 plus 0.10, you have 0.15 molal in concentration of particles. You'll do the same thing for the salt, but since salt is in a 1 to 1 ratio, you'll get 0.15 of sodium, molal concentration of sodium, 
and 0.15 molal sodium or chloride concentration for a total of 0.30 molal. Strong acid, 0.1 molal, gives you 0.1 molal in hydrogen and 0.1 molal in chloride for a total of 0.2. The weak electrolyte, and in my opinion I would disagree with this, 0.05 molal in acetic acid, I think that it really has closer to 0.05 molal because you just have basically molecules of acetic acid and um, it's going to be slightly larger than 0.05 molal if you ask me and much smaller than 0.1 molal so they say it's somewhere in between there but I'd go on the lower estimation. Finally 0.1 molal of a molecular substance, a non-electrolyte, mm -hmm. sugar, is going to give me 0.1 molal in particles. So then, all you have to do is compare the total number. The one with the greatest number of molality apparently is salt. It should have the lowest freezing point. The next one on the lineup would be your hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid, a strong electrolyte, 0.2. We'd probably go next to the 0.15, that would be the calcium chloride. And then I would pick the acetic acid over the sugar and of course that's what it shows down here at the bottom. I think there's typos though in these answers at the bottom because they don't match what's in green. Don't worry about it. The stuff in the shaded box is correct. So you always have to take into effect that when they are electrolytes you might have to put a little multiplier factor in there for simplicity's sake if they're ionic just make that the number of total ions they make when they go into solution. We'll pick up next on uh, other colligative properties. So at this point in time, you should use this study guide or sample exercise 15.1, sorry, 13.10 as a guide for any question you have on your worksheets that have to deal with electrolytic solutions. Don't forget the Van Hoft factor.